Welcome to International Women's Day programs at KPFA Radio. You're now tuning in to Upstar Records Radio, a special program celebrating the strong, wise, and talented women of Upstar Records. Upstar Records is a project of Sunset Youth Services. Our studios are in San Francisco, California. Our doors are open to youth ages 14 to 24. As artists, musicians, and leaders of our creative community, we tell our stories, share our struggles, speak truth to power, and support each other through making art and music. Because music is love. You know what? I've noticed something in the world. Something people don't want you to know. And I think I figured it out. This thing on, mic check, one, two. Woman is a five letter word. It's willful, outgoing, motivating, active, and nonstop. Come on, girls, let's do this. It's that women know. They know what they want, they know what they need, and they keep what's important in their heart. And they know how to lead. They don't follow. Excuse me, President Trump. What are your thoughts on the recent earthquake that has happened in Mexico? Women are confident, they're social and friendly, they're fun, and they're open. They don't close. Oh my god, babe, can you just talk to me, please? Women's words are gentle and firm. They're helpful and unique, never twice. Oh my god, can I have your hair, please? Women stand, they're strong and independent. They're fierce and they're loud, and not silent. <laughs> Women move, they don't know stop. They're fast-paced and they keep going. They try again and never give up. Come on, girls, get up on your feet, let's go. This is what it means. What it means to be a woman. What it means to be powerful and to be strong. We are women inside and out, and we are equal. That poem was by Upstar Records artist Lolo Anderson to set the tone for our show. I'm your host, Alia Cobrovias. I'm 20 years old and I like long walks to the fridge, but even more than that, I like long walks to record a song. Now, let's celebrate by listening to some Upstar Records music.
and that song is called All In My Head by Upstar Records artist Law. You can find this and other Upstar Records songs on soundcloud.com slash upstar records. Ain't coming, ain't no waiting, go get it, no hesitating Thinking about your situation, starting to pick and how you hating life Ain't nothing free, you gotta want it, gonna pay the price I throw the rats with the snakes, go tear up the mice I lost my mom to the street, she doing triple life I wake up every day asking God why we won't live twice Growing up, I seen it all, got raised up on a blocker Loyalty is everything and that I hold a lot of See, it's real up in the game, I lost so many partners Soon as you flip, you been I slip, they wish to say they gotcha I was taught to remain humble Especially in them streets Act loud, you meet the clouds And be sleep for weeks I can never talk down on none of my peeps The police will come quick to your door They stronger when you win I live a dangerous life Where it get hectic in the end I live a dangerous life Where it's real Ain't no pretend We won't rock the same lens We won't set the same trends Cause I live a dangerous life Ain't no telling where I done been I live a dangerous life Where it get hectic in the end I live a dangerous life Where it's real Ain't no pretend We won't rock the same lens We won't set the same trends Cause I live a dangerous life Ain't no telling where I done been Sunset Youth Services has been helping kids and families in San Francisco for almost 30 years. That's at least nine years longer than I've been alive. My friends Guy the Empress and Michaela sat down with founder and executive director Dawn Sickle to learn about her leadership. Um, my name is Michaela, and we're interviewing the mother of Upstar herself, Dawn, and I'm here with my friend, Gaia. Hey, hello. Thanks for tuning in. It's our International Women's Day special uh, here on KPFA. Dawn, along with friends, founded Sunset Youth Services in 1992. Dawn was the only woman to be involved with the creation of Sunset Youth Services and through the years and hard work, founded the program Upstar Records. Upstar and Sunset Youth Services have been helping youth of all backgrounds since opening. We have a few questions for Dawn so we can all be inspired by her great work. What are some advice and key words that you would give to the um, femmes or young women of today? When I stepped into the role as executive director for this organization that we had started, I think the only executive directors I had seen were men. Mm. And part of that is just because I hadn't been around a lot, right? I was still pretty young because there are some female EDs out there, but it still is the case that by and large, people expect men to be at the top. Yeah. And to, to make it even a little weirder, my husband and I started this together and technically I am his boss, right? So I'm his boss at work. And, or he will say, I am his boss at work also. But I think the encouragement that I needed at that time came from uh, my co-founders who were like, you need to make the role what it needs to be, right? You don't, it doesn't have to look like these, these things that you've seen that you don't want to be. Mm. Part of why we want you in that role is because of who you are. And so I think women leaders, we are able to to bring this sort of maternal empathy and space for everybody to be together in ways that are really difficult for men to do, right? This is generally speaking, of course. <laughs> but I think it's also easy to get tricked as a woman. It's easy to get tricked into thinking that in order to, to be a leader, we have to think and act like the guys do mm. because that's kind of what our society expects. And so I will say, you know, when men take a hard stand in leadership, they're considered very strong and assertive leaders. When women take a hard stand, we're labeled the Dramatic. Beaver, right? Or yeah, so, my babies, all of that. Yep. And so I think I, I would say to my younger self, be you, 
Like you are enough yeah. and go with your gut instinct because your intuition is, serves you well. And don't measure success by what other people are telling you success looks like, because particularly in work with other human beings, success to me is the relationships, right? That some days people might be like in and out of jail, like on paper, people are like, they're not doing great, Mm -hmm. right? But we're able to be like, actually, they're doing really well because they're staying connected with us. They're walking away from some things that they wouldn't have walked away from in the past. They're feeling that they have opportunities and they have a voice and a place where they can stand in their own skin and be themselves. And to me, that is success. So it doesn't matter. Like there's a lot of tendency that I think the nonprofit world has fallen into a bit of a, the corporate world mentality around these metrics that we use to define success, which is all about how big is your budget? How big is your staff? How many people do you serve? And it immediately gets to be very like competitive for, for folks, right? And I think that level of data is easy to manipulate, but it's also easy to fall back on as if it's proof that what you're doing is meeting the need. And it's not always. And so I think for me as a woman leader, trusting my gut to say, no, this is how we're going to show up for folks. You know, it's still a struggle right? Like all of those struggles that that young women today and young femmes are struggling with, they don't ever go away, right? Body image never goes away, you know, and feeling like, oh my gosh, like I'm looking old. I need to, you know, like all, like society's going to judge me because now I'm, I look like I'm old. Yeah. And I would love to chime in and just add like, as an expecting mom, Um, I talk with my partner all the time just about how like it's so weird that you know um, my body is changing like this and I have these days where I think I'm I'm really fly I'm really attractive and then I see someone else that's pregnant and like how good they're doing it or how good they look and I I I swamp for the whole day you know just get swamped with these negative emotions and stir in how, you know, society doesn't tell me I'm good enough for being a mom bot or for, for having a mom bot. You're listening to Best For Me by Upstar Records artist Sierra.
Welcome back to Upstar Records Radio. Let's get back into the conversation between 22-year-old Upstar Records artists, Gaia the Empress and Michaela with Dawn Sickle, the woman in charge at Sunset Youth Services and Upstar Records. I am Gaia, again, talking to Mama Dawn, a really charismatic, powerful, and impactful leader here in the San Francisco Bay Area community. In 1992, once Sunset Youth Services was created, how did you hold yourself and staff to certain standards to maintain your vision? And what struggles have you overcome in that? At the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is relationships. Relationships are what change our lives. Relationships are what set us on a trajectory to thrive, right? It's If you ask people who have experienced success in whatever area of their life, they're going to point back to coaches and ministers and parents and aunties and grandmas, right? They're going to point teachers. Like we all have that list of people who believed in us, even if we didn't believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we have always felt very strongly that programs are secondary. Programs are a vehicle for us to get into the lives of y'all, right? So we may get into your life through the studio, but what we really want is to know you. Like what makes you tick? What are you, what's hurting you? What's, what are you loving? When are you your best self? How can we sit in your pain with you? Not try to fix it, just sit in it with you. Being in the pain with someone else is a really sacred space to be. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that without feeling like we got to jump in and tell you how to fix it yourself? That it's just like the honor and the sacred space of being there together, of holding someone when they cry. Since you are Mama Dawn and have raised so many of us, what are some changes you hope to see continue for the growth of Sunset Youth Services? And what are some things that you've noticed with all the youth that have come and gone that this will never change about Sunset Youth Services? What I hope never changes and what I will do my dead level best to make sure never changes is the fact that relationships stay front and center and the focus on being healing centered Mm. is never, never moves to a backseat that other things will come and go, you know, eventually, eventually digital arts and upstar may give way to something else, right? Mm. There was a day where we had pool tables and ping pong tables in here where we now have recording studios. So we're not attached to programs. We're attached to people. And I hope that if, if at some point in my time, I, retire, which feels doubtful, or just die at my desk, (laughs) which feels more likely, um, that whoever follows me will be every bit as committed to the relationships and the need for being healing-centered and strengths-based, right? So focusing on the strengths that people are bringing to to the table while we give tools and support and love for people to heal, from their past trauma, but we're not letting their trauma define who they are Yeah, because we're, we're taking that healing centered relational approach. What I hope to see moving forward ways in which young people can begin, and this is happening. So I don't want to say this isn't happening, but continuing to find ways for young people while they are healing to begin to trust a larger group of folks, especially peers, and that we would be able to have infused in these webs of relationships, really strong, healthy peer groups, where it's about lifting each other up and supporting each other and not competing and tearing each other down. And I say that because I've we have had some groups in the past where they just, they, they loved each other and they hated each other, right? It's like love and hate are not opposites. But I think while people are healing and feeling so vulnerable, it's easy to get lost in the fear and in the story. And so it can be a little like crabs in a pot, right? Where somebody's crawling and everybody's pulling them down because instead of lifting each other up, there's this need to like pull you down so I can shine. And I think I just, I have such a a deep desire to see healing be so profound that people can shine together. 
and that as you guys make and raise babies with each other, that you can be mamas that support each other, Mm -hmm. that you can be mamas that don't tear each other down and criticize each other, but are able to say, Gaia, you are having a bad day. Like, let me come get the little, or like, I made this mistake with my kid and I'm now I'm weeping over that. And like, I need my moms to come around me and be like, you're doing great. Like you can apologize. You can move forward. You're great. And I think I, I don't want that just for the moms, right? I want that for everybody. I want that for our, all of our artists. I love, I really do love how quickly I feel like folks get involved with us and, and then start giving positive feedback to each other around their poetry and their music and their videos and that that people really are genuinely like showing up for each other. And I just want more and more and more of that. Violence has always been a part of what we've dealt with. I think violence and drug use has changed, right? Fentanyl has changed the world Mm -hmm. and we've lost more young people to drug overdoses, accidental or otherwise, in the last five years than we've lost probably in the entire life of the organization from drug overdoses. Mm -hmm. And I think street violence has also changed in some ways. And I say that because in the early years, there were certain things that were just off limits, like someone else's funeral, even if that's your enemy, like like you just show respect. You would never go shoot up a funeral. You would never, like there are certain things like that that I feel like I want to get to a place where we can be together and love each other and lift each other up and not feel threatened by the fact that I'm lifting you. That doesn't dull my shine. As women, as femmes, as like whatever you want to call us, like we have a need to be for friendship. We need girlfriends. We need our girlfriends in a way that, I actually don't think men need it in the same way. And so we're wired differently in the, in our need for these relationships. And some of my, even to this day, some of my closest friends are girls I went to high school with and we've stayed in touch with each other. Our kids are same age, like, and we, we still get together. There's a small group of us that gets together every six months for a weekend. And that is so life-giving for me because Mm -hmm. These are people who knew me in high school when I was making all kinds of bad decisions and I was a train wreck and they loved me anyway. And they, we've known and loved each other through the years. And, um, and I, I believe we need that. We need those folks in our lives. I feel people deserve sagas in their friendships and, you know, like little internal epics that play out amongst friends because that history it it's so rich and it makes you so unique yeah. so you you just need also people to touch base with sometimes back in the day you had to take film out of a camera and take it to some place <laughs> and um so i we ended up with stacks of pictures i had so many pictures of trips and stuff we did with kids and just all kinds of things And so I decided that I was going to put them in photo albums and just partly it was like, I'm going to remember that this is how I spent my life. And if I need to look back and justify anything, I'll have these pictures of these amazing faces that I love. Right. But what it turned into that I didn't see coming was how many of those kids that grew up continued to come in and look through the photo albums and be like, oh my God, remember when I was chubby or remember when I was like so skinny or remember when I lost my teeth and I had like, you know what I mean? Like, or, or just those shared memories of like people who knew me back then, who I still know. And a lot of them, this was sort of the most consistent place of those memories for them. Now it's gone digital, but we still have that, right? We have these pictures and interviews with you guys and showcases and all these digital stuff that we have to kind of remember that we've journeyed together. So that someday, you know, when you're in your thirties, we're like, hey, look at 17 year old Michaela, you know, like those things are are really valuable to us as humans. We need people who knew us at other times to say like, I knew you then, I know you now, and I love you just the same. That feels like a very beautiful, you know, wrap up, honestly. You know, you're definitely a multi-talented, multifaceted pioneer of empathy, I would say. 
you know, and it shows in all the different areas that Sunset is able to have a hand in that is not just, you know, frivolous, but with much care and intention and with the, the purpose of spreading love. And it is, it's been such a joy to speak to you and to hear from you and to, you know, in my opinion, attain of what I feel is knowledge and inspiration in your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Upstar Records Radio. We're giving you a glimpse into what young female artists in San Francisco are creating. I'm your host, Alia Cobarubias. When it all falls now, who can I turn to? I've been praying and praying somebody on this surf will pick me up and let me out of the dirt. Who can I turn to? Lord, it's like I'm living the curse. When it all falls down, who can I turn to? Who can I turn to? Tina was just a teen, but been through about everything. Stayed in church, she prayed and sing for happy and better things. Turn to by Upstar Records artist Fan Banga. I'm Alia Cobarovias with Upstar Records Radio, and you're listening to KPFA International Women's Day Special Programming. Did you know you can find this and other Upstar Records songs at soundcloudcom Upstar Records? No. 
not? Is you writing or not? Is you here or not? Is you bae or not? Is you down or not? Make a choice. Cause I'ma move on without your voice. Don't got time. So you here to stay or I'm moving on and I'ma get away. Is you down to stay? Is you down to ride? If not, baby boy, go ahead and make a choice. I'ma move on and I'ma push through. I'ma get to the top and that's what I'ma do. You say you here, but you really not. I'm tired of the games and that's not a thought. All the games that you play and the lies that you tell, it's too late to try and be real. Is you You just heard Down by Upstar Records artists Low Baby and Bina Rowe. Same repeating cycle. <laughs> they say they want a good girl and then they don't know how to keep her. My heart is playing this hard for game. Ignoring all these times it's so insane. I keep trying, keep looking, keep standing, keep pushing. Yeah, deep down it's knocking me down. Giving my all, yeah, I'm so down and out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, you know I gave you my all. You didn't deserve to know. Let me. Yeah, you know it Still slipped in through Well, you know damn well I was for you I was your being I was your wife All those fairy tales dream I couldn't I gave you my heart and yes I gave you my soul and yes I gave you all Listen, pack this bag, cause dude, you gotta go. I tell him love doesn't live here anymore. Heartbroken and bitter, crazy how things change. From a rock to a diamond, I can't stay the same. I gave you my heart, and yes, I gave you my soul, and yes, I gave you all of me. Thought we were meant to be. It's too late. I don't want you back, it's too late. I'm doing better off, it's too late. you love me but you couldn't love me so you push me away boy you know this is insane you push a real good girl away heard my all by kia nicole all songs are written and produced by youth and young adults at upstar records a project of sunset youth services find us on soundcloud at soundcloud.com slash upstar records
Records artist Lexi and Sunset Youth Services staff member Veronica. I'm Malia Kobarubias with Upstar Records Radio, and you're listening to KPFA International Women's Day special programming. On International Women's Day, we want to acknowledge the women who came before us. They made our lives a lot better and a lot easier. Whether we know their stories or not, we appreciate and acknowledge our ancestors for their triumphs and their pain. Up next, 16-year-old Maisie and 17-year-old Marielle take a moment to ask their families about their ancestors. Hi, my name is Marielle. I work at Sunset Youth Services, and today I'm going to be talking with my mom, Cynthia Coffin, about our family history for International Women's Day. I'd love to talk to you about our family history and know, because I think I know a little bit, but I'm not very clear. I wondered if I could ask you about your memories to learn more about our family's origins. What do you know about my great-grandparents? Your great-grandparents, my grandparents. um, I was very close with my grandmother. She was an American citizen, but she grew up in New Mexico and her first language was Spanish. My, she had two husbands. So her first husband was my grandfather, um, my biological grandfather, and then she remarried, and that was my other grandfather. And when I would ask about it as a kid, I was it was just explained that I had two grandpas, grandpa with the white hair and grandpa with the black hair. So when I refer to them, that's basically the way I remember them. Um, they were both immigrants, both my grandmother's husbands. They were from the Philippines. They came in... I think the 1930s, and like many immigrants, they came for financial opportunity. They came to seek work. When did they learn English? Well, the Philippines, English is pretty well recognized. So they probably knew a little bit, but they learned when they got here. But they worked in labor camps with a lot of other Filipinos. So they probably just learned as they went. Um, I remember my dad was born in the Philippines and when he would come visit after my parents split up I would I could remember hearing my grandfather and he talk and it was weird to me because my grandfather really didn't speak Tagalog or Ilocano to anybody else so it was weird to hear him speak his native language to somebody else. Do you know why specifically he chose Modesto when he came to America for financial opportunities? I actually didn't know this until listening to my uncle talk about it at um, her funeral. My grandfathers were farm laborers, so they basically were following the work in the Central Valley with the harvest. So they would travel up and down wherever the work was and stay kind of in the work camps. And I didn't know that until probably a couple of years ago. I just sort of took for granted that Modesto was where we lived. Do you think since immigrating here, there's a difference in work? work ethic between generations because we have less to work for because we were born in America and have access to more opportunities? Well, my grandfather came here with nothing and my grandmother probably had very little, so they had to work for everything they had. Um, I remember, I only remember her house, but apparently it took them quite a long time. You remember the house, it was quite small and modest, a long time for them to save that kind of money. And then my mother had a better life, more education. 
I never appreciated the education I got either. School was just what I did. Um, and until you think about, you know, maybe somebody not finishing second or third grade, what kind of job really could you have? Um, you, I, I think I talked about this at Graham's funeral. It's just where our lives were. I think about that. At 16, she was getting married, and I was getting my driver's license. At 18, she was a mother, and I was graduating from high school. In my mid-20s, I had finished law school and was setting out on a career, and she had five children to support. Um, so it just shows, you know, she never really had that luxury. Um, and if my mother and she didn't provide all the needs that I had, food, shelter, clothing, I wouldn't have um, the opportunity to pursue my education. Why did she leave school so early? Her parents died when she was 12. I used to think my grandmother's grandmother raised her, but I think her grandmother also was kind of elderly and sick, so I think it really, my grandmother never got a chance to be a kid. She just was always taking care of somebody or, or working. She didn't have that luxury of finishing her education. Thinking about your mom and her mom, what's the most valuable thing you've learned from them? Uh, I definitely think hard work. And it wasn't hard farm labor, but everybody had jobs. And then when I was in high school, I had a job. And the expectation was that I go to school and I achieve. And I worked. Is there anything else that you know about your grandparents that you can share with me? They were very simple people. In what way? They weren't educated. I don't remember them going on elaborate vacations. They would go fishing occasionally. They would take trips to Lake Tahoe for, on the bus to go gamble. But I don't remember them ever taking any trips, going anywhere. But they were very loving and supportive. Yeah, and obviously our future wouldn't be possible without them. It's good that you're curious and it helps. Yeah, if I don't know it, no one else is going to pass it down after a certain amount of time. So thank you. You're welcome. So I'm the, f- the fourth generation born and raised in San Francisco, but I know, but I don't know much about those other generations that came before you. So today I'd like to ask a few questions about what it was like growing up in San Francisco and our family history. What do you know about your grandparents, my great-grandparents? My mother was Czechoslovakian and my father was Spanish. Their parents came from Czechoslovakia and Spain. My mother's maiden name was Kovacic and my father's name was Gonzalez. And they were born in, and raised in San Francisco. Are your are your grandparents originally from Spain and Czechos- Czechoslovakia? My grandparents, yes. Because you're really mixed, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, let me think. Um, Czechoslovakian on my mom's side, Spaniard and Filipino. Filipino. Yep. And then... Yeah. My dad's side, I'm Palestinian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, as a kid, where did you and your friends play or hang out? There was a ice skating rink on 48th Avenue. We'd go there. There were theaters. There was one up on Irving, I think around where Andronico's is now. There was a five and dime. I'm sure there were more stores. I can't remember because all we ever went to was the five times. <laughs> you know, you could get a lot of cool little things for not much money. And a lot of times we'd go downtown. You'd, but, but in those days, you got dressed up to go downtown. We weren't allowed to go to the park. Although, shh, don't tell. We did anyway. <laughs> Were you listening to or going out to see any famous shows in San Francisco, like their bands, like um, Janis Joplin, Grateful Dead? 
um, Jimi Hendrix? Yes, when I was growing up, they had a lot of free concerts in the park. In, um, I think around the polo fields. And I saw Janis Joplin. Um, I saw, uh, I can't remember who all I saw there, but I also went to the Fillmore and I saw Jimi Hendrix. Oh, I saw the Beatles. Not, oh, not cool. for, but at Candlestick Park. That's cool. Lucky you. Did you hang out on Haight Street? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I think I wasn't supposed to be there either, but um, it was right by my, my high school, too, so I would be there a lot. So I'm a sophomore in high school, and I realize that I don't even know where you graduated high school from. Where was it, and what was your school like? probably wouldn't even know it because it's no longer around. It was called Polytechnic High School. It was um, across from Kizar. Oh. It, it was um, a majority of Black students. And so my friends and I were some of the few first white kids to go there. It was a very different time, but I loved it. What was it like being one of the few white kids? Were there fights oh, or people mostly get along? There were some fights, but I get along with people, you know, and that's the way I've always been. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about our family history, about your grandparents or memories or other family stories? Just that they were good times and I miss them. And, and enjoy while you can because time goes by fast. by Upstar Records artist B. Aura from Upstar Records 2019 EP called Wednesday. All songs are written and produced by youth and young adults at Upstar Records, a project of Sunset Youth Services. You say you love me, but sure you don't. 
I'm always calling, never pick up the phone. We've been distant, driving me crazy. What happened to you, being my baby? You do me shady, I act like nothing's wrong. Tell me you love me, but you don't love at all. Say that you need me, but all you do is play me. How you my baby, but don't appreciate me. No. was No More Crying by Upstar Records artist A. Shaw. Find us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash U-P-S-T-A-R-R-E-C-O-R-D-S, Upstar Records. Let's close out the celebration with a song called Muevete by Upstar Records artist Tiffany. Thanks for listening to Upstar Records Radio, a project of Sunset Youth Services in San Francisco, California. I'm Alia Covarubias with Upstar Records.
We've loved using music and stories to celebrate women's rights. We hope to inspire all people to act in the ongoing fight for gender equality. Up next, more special programming on KPFA honoring International Women's Day.